Welcome to another episode of the Federal Church Presents Better Than Bloomberg. We're covering the uh, banking system failure. Not just America, but all over the world. Especially the fucking third world. And today we're going to have another course in the John Merriweather School of Trading with Aussie Work-Life Balance. I will admit one thing. I was wrong about one thing. You can do this at the beach. There you go. There you go. Here's one. Over there. You can see it. But as for the rest of the failures, as you saw last night, everything was uh, collapsing as it should, by the way. Because again, this isn't a uh, systemic failure. This is a dipshit failure. And I was watching Bloomberg last night. And one of their dipshits uh, actually went on the TV and talked about the, uh, the dipshit trade, as I call it. And it was, uh, it was one of the shitholer uh, cunt MDs from, uh, from, what was it, Solstgen. And I think it was, I don't know what department they call it, they got names from, different names that every fucking there. It was something in their rage shit. And then she goes on there, and then she's going around telling everybody how she put on the fucking wrong way trade. Which, again, in no way, shape, or form will ever become the right way trade, given the fact that every central bank on earth has printed trillions of dollars and shut down the world and ceased productivity for three years, for the most part. And this person actually goes on Bloomberg and says it. Dipshits. But... The, uh, and I didn't watch uh, more than that. There was only one from Sostjen. There was another from Newberger Berman. And you can tell how prevalent the dipshit trade is. And again, this isn't like uh, 2008, where, you know, at least somebody had the excuse because they were, you know, esoteric, Byzantine sorts of fucking goddamn derivatives that, you know, some people never even fucking heard of. This, this is one of the most plain vanilla, of vanilla trades, and they went the wrong way on it, and like I said, they're, and if you watch these, uh, if you watch these interviews too, they're actually expecting it, you know, they're essentially expecting the Fed to just kind of keep printing money, to keep rates artificially low, which again, the Fed doesn't need to raise rates, because the market will do it for them, given that they're printing trillions just for the deposits, deposits alone, you know, not to, uh, not to, uh, cover the, uh, shareholders or, or the, uh, bondholders. So that's a shitload more money printing to add fuel to the fire. So even if these aren't, uh, even if artificially they're done for a very short term, you only have a very short term. Because eventually that day of reckoning will come. And it's either they default on the toiletries or they inflate it away. And they're well on their way in inflating it away. Especially with how many, how many trillions and bail-ins and bailouts and such. But you know, I just bring that up because I saw a bunch of funny things too where, uh, you know, like somebody's complaining on Twitfest. Oh, the KPMG signed off on SVP and Signature Bank books, Signature Bank's books. Oh my God, they're such bad people. Oh my God. This, this is not the auditor's fault. The KPMG signs off on it and says, yeah, this is their shit books. This, this, is, this is accurate. They have shit on their books. They didn't put the shit there. <laughs> their dipshit management did. But again, they put on the dipshit trade. They went the wrong way. And again, how many institutions did this? And I guess we get a uh, we get an idea. So uh, Zero Hedge put it up on his uh, his Twitfest account. Hang on here. Where it, uh, where is it? A little screenshot of uh, essentially the the banking sector equities imploding. Where is it now? There it is. Well, 
I guess we get an idea of how much they. I'm sure. Well, you can look it up too. I think. Wait, you get an idea of how much shit they're holding. And again, it's it's not some, you know, some unknown, difficult to understand derivative. They were just dipshits. And there was something. What else was it? Oh, they're they're saying. Oh, right, oh, and I saw the zero is three two. Uh, oh, it's the Fed's fault. It's the regulators' fault. Oh, it's it's not the regulators' fault. I mean, if, if they they decided to go by, you know, they decided to go the wrong way on the fucking trade, you know, that's that's not the fault of anybody's or of anybody in the regulatory, you know, anybody in any regulatory position. I mean. It'll be the bank's dipshit management, risk management, but that that's not a that's not the Fed's fault. But you also get to see the, uh, the bank failure. So again, they're, they're still uh, like in their in their media too. I bring up the uh, Bloombergstein uh, stuff I was watching yesterday, and they bring up the. They, they bring up the, the word contagion. So contagion from SVB. Contag- it's not contagion from SVB, even though they're taking a bunch of shit down with them. It's the fact that there's a bunch of dipshits who shouldn't be having their jobs. Let's take a look here. And yeah, you get to see the banking sector implode. Uh... Yeah, you're going to see a lot of those fail, and they should, because there's no fucking excuse for their, uh, I don't know if you want to call it mismanagement, because it's just plain fucking stupidity. It's, uh, how, how on earth did you expect that stuff to not become worthless? And again, even if it doesn't fail within the next few days, the day of reckoning will come for all of these institutions. And nobody in their right mind will be the fucking bag holder as a shareholder or bondholder of these institutions. So now, when they're also dumb enough to go on Jew Bergstein and talk about going the wrong way on these trades, you know, you just kind of wonder, just how much dipshit is in this and how much of it is their little, you know, uh, conditioning thinking the Fed's going to save them. Where in this case, the Fed can't save them. And they're already writing checks they can't cash just for deposits. Just deposits alone. You know, not anything else. So, yeah, you're going to see an absolute failure of that garbage, uh, that, that uh, financial system, I mean. The, there's at least 20 that are going down, you know, probably soon. Within the next few days, I mean, within the next few hours. You know, one by one in the next, in the coming hours. And then... Even if they don't, at some point they will. And their equity prices and their bond prices would implode, and it should. Because it's run by dipshits. You know, this isn't the Fed's fault. This isn't the auditor's fault. This isn't KPMG pulling in Arthur Anderson. These are dipshits who should not have had their fucking jobs. And again, it wasn't even fraud. Like, if you take a look at the SVB... Uh, the SVB, you know, uh, what, what do you call it? Fuck up. You know, it, it wasn't fraud. They were just dipshits. And, and looking at their backgrounds, I think they'd actually be too stupid to commit fraud. They're just dipshits. And again, they should be fucking wiped out because that's how the fucking free market should work. You know, the Fed should not subsidize dipshits. And, you know, the funny part, too, of what they're doing is that the fucking more, yeah. Well, the uh, the worse off will be the ones bearing the brunt of the inflation there. Yeah, like I, I saw this one from uh, Zero Hedge. Fed announces probe into its own regulatory failure at SVB. Federal Reserve Board on Monday announced that Vice Chair for Supervision Michael S. Barr is leading a review of the supervision and regulation of SVB in light of its failure. 
The event surrounding Silicon Valley Bank demand a thorough, transparent, and swift review by the Federal Reserve, said Chair Jerome H. Powell. As a reminder, it was Moody's that initially brought up issues with SVB. SVB reported its fourth quarter results in uh, early 2023. Moody's investor service and credit ranging took notice. Yeah, they noticed that there were a bunch of dipshits. And then it said that SVB was at a high risk for a downgrade due to significant unrealized losses. And again, that's nobody's fault but the dipshits over at SVB. SVB looked to sell $2 billion of its investments at a loss to help boost liquidity. struggling balance sheet. Soon more hedge funds and venture investors realize SBB could be on thin ice. Investors withdrew funds in droves, spraying liquidity screws and prompting California regulators and the FDIC to step in and shut down the bank. Which it should, because they're dipshits. I mean, there's honestly no excuse for it, too. Fed's review will be publicly released by May 1st. We need to have humility and conduct a careful and thorough review of how we supervise and regulated this firm and what we should learn from this experience, advised Chair Barn. In case you wonder where we stand on this. The regulatory failure. Yeah, that's where I disagree. I disagree. No, it's just a failure. But yeah, Fed should not be fucking goddamn, you know, touting whatever fucking what bullshit which got you the dipshits to crush that bank or devastate that bank with their idiocy and then uh, yelling fucking you know printing a hundred billion dollars for Ukraine there yeah they, that, that, that should not be happening but this is a dipshit failure and not really Powell's fault because um, it's not his fault people were dumbasses buying toiletries Yeah, so it should be expected, you know, it's just like to what happened the last couple hours, too. The, uh, well, you saw that all of the, as we saw there, so basically all of the banking sector fucking implode. It's a chud. And then, it'll drag down the rest of the market with it, it should, especially with the machines. But you saw PPT in action trying to fucking uh, goose things up a little bit. But that's not going to change the fact that these shit fucks literally have, at least the ones that you could see from the small regional banks, that was just them, of $620 billion in screw-ups, and that's just the underlying. Now, look at the rest of the world, or the rest of the uh, banking sector even in America, or North America for that matter. Yeah, they're fucked. And you're going to see plenty more going under. Simply because their management were dipshits. This, this isn't a complicated thing. This, this isn't like 2008 in the sense that it wasn't a complicated mess that involved a bunch of fraud. You had absolute fucking morons in this example. And it's much worse than 2008 because it's much more widespread. And then on um, Bloom Bergstein over there, they were talking about like psychology or something. Well, let's talk about the fucking market psychology, the mess, you know, psychology. Their, their little herd mentality just seemed to think that the Fed was just going to you know, keep everything suppressed when they can't. Not after trillions of dollars. Not after shutting down the world for, you know, uh, how many years? So again, if you have all of these bondholders and equity holders knowing they're going to be hosed at some point, you know, it all just becomes, who's going to be the dipshit to hold the bag? And of course, nobody's going to want to be that person unless you're these shitholder dipshits that go on Bloomberg and actually talk about how you went the wrong way on probably what should have been the most obvious thing on fucking earth.
and I don't know how many of them did that too because like when I was watching you know like on Bloomberg uh, you can see like whoever's coming up next and, like, and then the, the, the what's his name uh, it's like oh we have a ton of people wanting to go yeah they're trying to bullshit their position because they're dipshits <laughs> so and then I, I went to bed but the uh, yeah it should be pretty entertaining in the next couple days Take a look here. What zero edge is it has also. Oh, here's another good one too. I wonder why that is. Because probably everybody figured out now that you can take a easy. You can easily take a look at how many of these dipshits put on the dipshit trade and how fucked they are. USA sovereign credit risk hits record high as interbank funding stress explodes. Well, it should, because these shit fucks should go under, because they're fucking idiots. There's, there's no excuse for this. Yeah, so the FRA and the OIS spread is the highest since Lehman. It should be. Or that's, that, that's what you should expect. And this is the funny part, too. It's these shit classes that are going to bear the brunt of this. Because there is no more middle class in America. And that's another thing about this third world shit world. Like, these people produce nothing. You manufacture nothing. You produce nothing. You know? And if you're one of the few people that actually have an education or any actual skills, that's the few people that are not going to be ending up like these shit class morons who simply believe that they're entitled to a first world standard of living just because they exist. Just because they're in America, which produces nothing. And that reality is pretty much dawning on them, if it hasn't already, it's dawning on them right now. To, you know, your expectations and your delusion about your, you know, your little greatness there are fucking delusion. That's why there is no more fucking middle class here the third world dump and you know with this de-dollarization the toiletries uh, becoming toiletries and, and such well you can expect it to fully become a third world country you know it manufactures nothing doesn't really have any you know natural resources there's no reason to expect that it would be Oh, and this is an even bigger, or even better question here. This week will determine whether the Fed is yet done, but the bigger picture story here is that SVB so reinforces our conviction of recession and significant rate cuts. Like, like I was saying, damned if they do, damned if they don't. What should they do? They should pull a Volcker and fucking goddamn raise rates to over 20%. That's what they should do. Can they do it? Not without everything imploding. If they don't do it, oh, you get to die in inflation anyway. So, there's not really much they can do. They're fucked in all sense of the world. In, in, all, uh, in, all, uh, in all cases, I mean. <coughs> oh, by the way, you should probably short social too. How confident are you that the FOMC will pause in March? Well, let's take a look at that. I didn't even read this yet. I guess uh, Goldman had an answer there. But let's think about that one. Suppose they did. You still have inflation. You still die in inflation. 
your banks are still fucked because they're full of dipshits and they're worth nothing now. They're close to it. And so if they keep hiking, well, they go under too. And that bullshit CPI too. Yeah, that's fudged. Yeah, that's fudged to a ridiculous degree where, you know, the Soviets had better data. That's not an exaggeration either. Yields and financials in free fall amid haven flows on bank failure fallout. Yeah, those bank failures aren't done. And even if they don't happen tomorrow, it'll happen eventually. 